Hey there! This video is gonna be a little different. There's no script today, there's just me and you guys, uh, the camera. And I just wanna discuss something that's been on my mind for a while now, and I just wanna share my thoughts, my own views. You know, you might disagree with me, uh, let's have a conversation in the comment section down below, but today I wanna discuss differences between X86 and ARM64, since there's been a lot of buzz around lately about ARM64 and what does it mean for the industry. And maybe we could also, you know, talk about what to expect next, what's what's there next for the PC industry, uh, because I'm, in my opinion, we are currently living in a very exciting times in terms of, you know, what's happening with an industry and what will happen very soon and what will it mean for, for us, for end users, for our customers. So let's just start talking about ARM64. ARM64 has been here for ages. It's not something that's new, that's only been using your, you know, smartphones, laptops, and cars nowadays. In fact, the company ARM LTD was founded in 1990. And then the first mass production ARM CPU was produced in 1993. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not a new technology. It's not a new concept. But only now we can hear more and more about ARM64 in our Windows PC. You know, it was a thing five, seven years ago when Microsoft really wanted to push Qualcomm CPUs on their own in-house Surface devices, but it failed badly. It was too slow, the compatibility was terrible. You know, it's just, it's just technology wasn't there. And so that was really that for the PC industry. You know, uh, Microsoft tried to push it in the Surface devices, uh, but it never really worked out very well. You know, the ARM was always here, was in your smartphone, whether it was Android or iPhone, but it wasn't ready for a PC until 2020 when Apple finally transitioned from Intel to their own in-house Apple Silicon. Now, it wasn't a perfect transition. It wasn't the smoothest transition ever, but I think they've done a pretty good job. And I have to admit, I was one of those who actually went out and bought M1 MacBook Air. In my case, it was the base MacBook Air. M1, eight gigs of RAM, uh, 256 gigs of storage, and it was mind-blowing. It was old chassis that was previously used for Intel variation of the MacBook Air, but the, you know, it was quiet, it had passive cooling, it was super fast. In fact, most of the early videos on this channel was edited on that laptop, on MacBook Air M1. And now, you know, even four years later, my girlfriend is using that very same laptop to edit her videos for her YouTube channel. So I think that that says something about, about the ARM architecture and how powerful it can be even, even in such a small and thin and, and you know, underpowered package. This is something that you, you wouldn't be able to do on x86 if you would simply go with, I don't know, R5 or i5, 8 gigs of RAM and 256 SSD. I mean, the storage is a, another story. You can, you know, you can attach external SSD, but the way system manages uh, memory and the way CPU handles all those tasks, you know, that's, that's, that's immaculate. And, you know, let's be, let's be fair here. Uh, I'm talking here about the Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's in-house editing software. You know, we know Adobe had an issue first when when Apple announced transition from, from Intel to their Apple Silicon. Uh, you know, it took a while for them to rewrite the application. And I mean, that only makes sense. Like developers will have to rewrite the applications completely from, from ground up. Uh, of course, Apple had Rosetta as a translation layer, as a, as a kind of emulator to, to emulate x86 apps. Uh, you know, I personally did not have any issue during the transition, but I wasn't using any niche applications or any niche workloads. I was simply using mostly Apple's first party apps uh, and they all work pretty well. What I did have problem with were some plugins. Uh, for Final Cut Pro, you know, it took some time for those third parties to rewrite those plugins for, for Final Cut Pro for, for Apple Silicon, but other than that, it was fine. But why do I want to talk about ARM64 today and, you know, where's x86 and what does it mean for, for the industry? One of the reasons is, is, you know, there's a huge benefit of moving from x86 to ARM64. I mean, don't get me wrong, x86 is, is here to stay. It will have a place for, for gaming, for workstations, uh, for systems which are using, you know, not, not, not consumers, not people like me and you who are using PC to do, to do you know, normal everyday stuff, but more for like a air, 
port terminals, which are probably using Windows XP in many cases to run very modified applications. They're not gonna move to ARM64 anytime soon. Right, but before we continue, we need to talk about advantages and disadvantages of, of ARM64. So first, I'm you know, not gonna go too technical. There are great channels which will talk about this in a very you know, detailed way, very technical way. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about it from my perspective and how does it affect my everyday life. So if I can just talk from my own experience and what it means for me, whether it's on Mac or Windows, ARM64 is super, super, super power efficient. Like you can, you can use those laptops, again, whether it's Windows or Mac, you can use it for, for a whole day or even two days if you really just do a light workload. Now that's that's the first advantage. Laptop actually becomes a laptop again. It's, you know, from the name, it's meant to be used on your lap. It's not meant to be used as a desktop. You're not supposed to be glued to your desk. Uh, you know, you're supposed to be moving around, around the house, sit in the patio, take it with you on, on train or plane, and you shouldn't be really, uh, you know, anxious about the fact that, you know, is there is there a plug nearby? Would I be able to recharge, you know, in, in two, three hours once the battery run out? So that's the first thing, and that's a big deal to me. Like, summer days, I work from home, and summer days I can sit on patio all day from nine to five and, and just work from there. And it just feels, it's very freeing. It's very refreshing experience. Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is the thermal management, uh, meaning ARM64 is not just very power efficient, but together with that, you, it doesn't produce as much heat, that means in some cases, you don't even need active cooling, meaning fans. So MacBook Air and even some Windows uh, 11 laptops with Snapdragon X Elite are now fanless. And I think that's great. Obviously, you need to limit the TDP, uh, TDP of the device, but in exchange, you get dead quiet system, just like your tablet or your smartphone. And I think, I think that's brilliant. One of the most annoying things for me on Windows machines, especially older Intel laptops, is the fan noise. Like, it's just unbelievable. You have a laptop that costs sometimes $3,000 or, or euros, and the fans are just super, super noisy, and the battery will die within three hours. Like, to me, that's that's simply, that's just unacceptable in, in 2023, 2024. So that is something that ARM64 can address. And the third thing that's, that's also very important to me is that the responsiveness of the system. The system on ARM is just, operating system on ARM is just this fast. It's just so quiet, there's, there's no lag. I mean, there are exceptions, but if you put, like right now, if you take the same spec of Windows 11 laptop on, on Intel or AMD, and then on ARM 64, so in this case, the only one I can think of is Snapdragon X Elite, the difference in just navigating UI around and launching apps is, is, is massive it's huge obviously those apps needs to be fully translated into into arm 64 so but that, that's so that's another layer of this of this whole discussion the compatibility uh, but if you have app that's been written for arm 64 and, and and the app can take full advantage of the platform the difference is just night and day it, it's massive so those are the benefits benefits are undeniable but then you know there are also disadvantages and i think you know, let's address the elephant in the room, compatibility. So unless the app is fully rewritten by a developer uh, from ground up for ARM64, then it's not gonna fully utilize the platform and it's just gonna run through the, through the layer of the emulator, uh, or it's not gonna run at all, and then you have a problem. So if you, you know, if your workload involves something very niche, not just traditional Microsoft 365 apps, and, and browser and whatnot, then you know you're gonna have a problem. You know there's very some problems when Snapdragon launched their latest CPU with the VPN apps. Uh, they're slowly getting rewritten, but to be compatible on ARM64, but it will take time. And there is also another huge caveat to this, and that's gaming. Gaming on ARM64 is gonna take a while. Even now, if you install Steam on on Windows 11 on ARM64. You're gonna find some games that's gonna run just fine, but majority of your library is not gonna be compatible. And that's a problem because you buy a PC, you buy a gaming PC, so you can play all games you want to play, you know. Otherwise you would just buy PS5 or, or Xbox Series X or whatever, you know, to, to, to just play whatever's out there. But with PC, you should be able to emulate anything. You should be able to launch a game that's 
10, 15 years old. I mean, <laughs> hell, GTA 5 is 11 years old already. So the gaming, gaming is a big one. So this is why I believe that the transition that's currently happening from x86 to ARM64 will mainly affect uh, thin and light laptops. You know, Dell XPS, uh, HP Envy, uh, then we have uh, likes of Lenovo Yoga, Lenovo ThinkPad. You know, for the laptops like this, it, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense to go to ARM64 and just, just never look back at 86. But then, you know, there's gaming, there are workstations and there are, you know, niche systems. As I said, you know, there's a, there's a whole bank, banking system, which is using ancient, ancient systems uh, uh, with very old operating systems. So it will take much, much, much longer than it took Apple. You know, Apple has everything under their roof. They can, they control everything end to end. So for them, it took only like two or three years to fully transition every single device uh, within their within their ecosystem. But now we also see that that, that improvements increment improvements are now more incremental from M1 to M2 to M3 to now M4, which we have on iPad Pro and soon on uh, MacBooks Pro. It's not as a huge jump as it was from Intel to M1. Like the, the, the jump there was just massive, whether it was battery life or, or performance or just efficiency was huge. You know, here's the thing. If you if you are in a market for Windows laptop, if you if you don't want to buy Mac, if you if you don't like Apple or you know you you know you can use uh, MacBook at, at your work or, or or you know college, then if you are not that niche group of people which I mentioned already, then you know, wait, go out, test around some ARM64 laptops that are available at stores already, uh, and see if you're, if they fit your workflow. So if, if, if the compatibility is there for you, and if you can utilize the benefits of the long battery life and all that stuff. If not, then if I would be you, and if you don't desperately need a brand new laptop right now, I would wait. I would wait, because I'm sure Qualcomm isn't the only brand that will bring ARM64 CPUs to, to the table, you know? Uh, there are some rumors on the, on, a, on the internet for a while now, especially about AMD preparing their own ARM CPU. So, you know, there's no secret that AMD has been better in making CPUs for thin and light laptops lately. You know, the, their systems were always uh, cooler and quieter and performance was, you know, better if not the same as the one on, you know, equivalent machine of the Intel. So, so yeah, Windows PC transition to ARM64 has began, but it's gonna take much, much longer than it took Apple uh, for obvious reasons, which we already discussed. I mean, the Microsoft is really pushing the Copilot Plus PC platform. They're saying it's next generation AI PC, uh, you know, that, so they're they trying to give you a reason to buy a new PC. And Microsoft also told PC OEMs that if their platform doesn't have at least 40 tops uh, it will not qualify for Copilot Plus PC. So, but what does it mean in real life? It means you wouldn't get those, you know, fancy Copilot Plus PC features. But for me, what's more interesting, this this is their own different story. This is this is what Microsoft is pushing. For me, as an end user, what's really important is what Qualcomm managed to do with the Snapdragon X Elite. I mean, previously we've seen some attempts for Qualcomm to implement. Uh, ARM64 CPUs within Windows 10 or 11 laptops, and it never really worked that well. They were, you know, either too slow or compatibility wasn't there. But now, when Microsoft is committed and Qualcomm delivered a CPU which is way more than capable, you know, we you've probably seen all the reviews. I've tested the laptop uh, for months now, the, the Yoga Slim 7X. I'm currently working on on full in-depth review of this laptop, and in my opinion, it's a, it's a game changer. This platform for Windows laptop users is just it's the same thing that you know happened to to Mac users back in 2020. To be honest, literally, we see more and more developers to be on board with ARM64. Even Windows 11 ARM64 version is now somewhat better than x86 version. I mean, and you know why? If you go out now and buy a laptop on ARM64, more specifically Snapdragon X Elite, you will get all the Copilot Plus PC bells and whistles from day one when you purchase the laptop. Well, minus the recall feature, which was <laughs> recalled, <laughs> but yeah. But if you buy another platform, which 
is also Copilot Plus PC compatible, but it's x86, more specifically, you know, Interlunar Lake, for example, which was introduced at IFA. You will not get those Copilot Plus PC features, at least until Q1 2025, according to Microsoft. So you will have all the horsepower, but you will not be able to utilize it. So you will still get the benefit of fantastic Lunar Lake efficiency. You know, even though it's x86, what Intel managed to do with this platform is, you know, it's pretty impressive, I have to say. Yeah, there are some limitations such as maximum, you know, 32 gigs of RAM, so no 64 gigs or above in terms of memory, but it's still impressive what they managed to squeeze of the of this 40 year old platform. But yeah, what I'm trying to say, Microsoft is clearly bet all their cards on, on Qualcomm with this, with the, with the start of the transition to ARM64 and it worked out. I think it worked out pretty well. So what's next for Windows PC? I think we will see more and more CPU manufacturers coming to the market with ARM64 as more and more developers are on board with this and they are currently rewriting uh, older apps. And customers are just discovering the benefits of ARM64 on Windows, like people that never used Mac or they used Mac you know, years ago when it was well, PowerPC or even when it was an Intel. But I strongly believe that we will see more and more ultra thin PC laptops on, on ARM64 soon. And I wouldn't be surprised if within three, four, maybe five years, 80% of laptop market would fully transition to ARM64 and there will still be that niche group and, and gaming laptops uh, on x86, which is perfectly fine. You know, everyone should buy what's most suitable for, for their need. Uh, but for me personally, ARM64 is introducing uh, new capabilities of laptop, new possibilities of, of working and creating. And I think that's the most important thing. Should you go out now and buy ARM64 PC bit, I don't know, for example, that Snapdragon X Elite. Probably not, unless you are 100% sure that all the apps and programs and all the software they are, you are currently using has been fully translated in ARM64, then I would wait or maybe I would borrow uh, a Snapdragon X Elite laptop and, and play around with it for, for a few days to figure out whether it's really gonna work for you. But if you are considering buying your laptop, but you know, it's not that critical that you couldn't wait for next few months. I would, I would wait. I would wait to see what next year will bring in, what what other players, big players, will bring into the table. You know, we have now have Qualcomm in a game, Intel, AMD. Let's just wait. So, yeah, those have been my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's have a conversation down below in the comment section. Uh, again, as I said, I'm currently working on full in-depth review of Yoga Slim 7X, which is based on uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite. Spoiler alert, my experience has been fantastic so far. So, so yeah, I can't wait to share that video with you guys. Uh, and let me know what you think of this format. Usually when I work on these videos, they take me weeks to produce because YouTube is not my full-time job, so I usually do these on the weekends or evenings. But today I said, you know, screw it. I'm not going to use any, any script. I'm not going to use any teleprompter. I'm just going to sit in front of the camera and talk to you guys and just speak, you know, I speak my mind and share my thoughts. So let me know if you prefer this format. So maybe I could, I can just introduce videos in this format uh, from now on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.